Mm. Oh, I love that first sip of coffee. Jeez, and I love the first look at the charts for the day. Today is Monday, January 15th. It is the morning cryptos. We're beginning week number three of this current 90-day challenge to go deep into the rabbit hole of Bitcoin and the cryptoverse. So let's let's see what's up. Let's see what's not. Let's see what's ready to pop. All right, here we go. All right, I forgot to say start the music, but you get the idea. Anyway, woo! So I took a day off yesterday, and uh, I think that's always healthy. <laughs> uh, I had a big, I did a big kind of mind meld with Bitcoin on Saturday. I did a special report, you know, looking into the orifices of uh, Bitcoin. And my conclusion was that Bitcoin has found kind of its feet, uh, and it looks to me like it's getting ready to kind of build some waves, and that was my theory, and uh, it looked like it started to go, and then it looked like it came right back down to this line, this really is the $13,000 even in the US, on the U.S. dollar chart. Um of course, there isn't really a, is it just a Bitcoin chart that has Bitcoin and Bitcoin? It would just say one, right? Anyway, anyway, on this chart. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm looking particularly at the fact that we have these rising bottoms, but they're not rising by much. So uh, we're going to look at that. We're going to pull back, look at the one day chart, and then we'll go look at the news and see if there's anything remotely interesting from over the weekend. And it seems like my computer is going to be twitchy today. All right. So hopefully I can get through this before I have to reboot it. Um, so, <laughs> could be an interesting day. So I just was trying to figure out, you know, what's really, what's going on here uh, without really looking too much into external events like just what's going on with the energy of bitcoin and it definitely seems like it has quieted down uh i took the volume off where the hell is the volume i don't know where it went um but it it's just really kind of quieting down and the question i was trying to answer for myself is would i buy bitcoin here you know and how would I feel if I bought it? I kind of feel like this line here, this $13,000 line, is its actual support. Uh, and somewhere in the middle of this movement is its actual price. So, you know, if you're just going to draw weird averages. But nobody knows. That's the thing. Um, it's not like it's a new project that everybody's excited about, right? So... The altcoins have one thing over Bitcoin in that there's a lot of excitement because there's hope, right? People are going, well, we can do this with this or that. This will solve this problem, da, da, da. And Bitcoin is just kind of sitting here going, yeah, I'm slow and it costs a lot of money to move me around, but I'm Bitcoin. Yeah. So and there's rumors that the Lightning Network is actually starting to be implemented but I think that's just like kind of rumors so that people don't give up on it. So I don't know. There feels like this, this kind of draggy energy with Bitcoin. So that's my, my personal and extremely seriously humble opinion because I don't know shit about Bitcoin, right? I'm not a computer techie. Uh, I've only been even in this space for a year. So the question is, can I as a new person understand this enough to use it to my advantage. And right now, I really don't know what to do with Bitcoin. And uh, But I would much prefer to buy here at 13000 than at 17000 right? That's one thing I'm definitely sure of, right? But the question is, 
Could it go all the way back to 10? Could it go all the way back to 6 or 7? It actually could. And so I don't know. So I'm just kind of watching it. And I am not owning much of it right now at all. I have a tiny little bit of it. But that's, uh, I think I have a $2 worth. <laughs> but that's what I feel uncomfortable about. It's way up here. And it doesn't seem to be moving. And maybe that's what we need is a significant period of time uh, when it kind of does nothing. So I just was playing with drawing some lines here. I'm going to get rid of them. Um, the, that long one. I was trying to see what's the long term trend really, you know, because this is just, is it just Bitcoin coming up above its long term trend and then coming back down to its kind of trend line? And so I drew the line down here. You know, that's a pretty steep line. You know, if I draw the line here, it seems to make more sense, but Bitcoin would have to come down to this line. And I can't really draw it very well, you know. So it may really be doing a sideways thing. I still personally think that what we're going to see is it's going to come up to this point and it's going to come back down. So if you did get in here and it goes up to this point, you could sell and make some money. But again, we don't know. All right, so that's that's my my initial take on Bitcoin today. And uh, I still think it's going up to this to this spot, and then it will probably move in this sideways channel for a while, uh, and everybody will start writing it off and think that it's it's over. And then one day it will just start pumping again. <laughs> so that's my theory. Let's look at the Bitcoin price, and let's see if there's any news, any fun, anything interesting. Thirteen thousand seven hundred ninety nine. And according to Google, at the moment, 15,000 in sight. Bitcoin prices gather upside traction. That was 49 minutes ago. Uh, nothing else, really. Let's just type in Bitcoin news, just in case there's something uh, really exciting that we need to know before. Oh, by the way, just in case you didn't know, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. I just, Thought someone should point that out to you. Coindesk did a day ago. Uh, Bitcoin halts week long slide, but battles with regulatory pressure. Uh, okay, and that's yeah. So not much. All right, so let's look at some of these other things because I have not yet looked, and I want to look because I gotta look. I get I, it's my OCD, and I highly recommend this kind of. This kind of work for people who were hyper vigilant children uh, like myself. Because <laughs> so I was watching to see, am I in trouble? Did I do something wrong? Are they going to yell at me? Are they going to criticize me? Are they going to like reward me? Am I going to get ice cream? I'm kind of like a Labrador retriever in some ways. My friend's Labrador retriever was visiting me, and it's just like, you know, anytime any food sound was made, all of a sudden that dog was paying him very close attention. And that's the way I am with these cryptos. I'm a Labrador retriever in disguise, people. All right, so Bitcoin Cash still kind of working its way. I drew a lot of these dumb lines. I don't know why I drew so many lines. I just like lines, okay? Uh, I guess I was trying to make some connections in my brain. So Bitcoin Cash is doing a similar kind of thing, except it has higher bottoms, and it's... Kind of on a certain, it seems to be on a little bit of a trend line. I was making this connection on Saturday that it's, it's a little ceiling right now. is about the same as the big pop back in, uh, I think it was November. Uh, I still think that Bitcoin Cash is going to pop. I'm going to get rid of this line. And I'm just going to show you what what I think it's doing. And it's, it's, you know, again, this is not to be construed as investment advice. This is my complete opinion. And that's what I see. I see that it is working its way into this tightening wedge. And then it's got to, it's got to pop. Or, you know, it could just start climbing up this trend line. But that's what it's doing 
as far as I can tell. And I want to pop a, uh, let's see what I got here. I got a 25 day moving average. So, you know, that's a couple of weeks and it's, um, it's kind of sitting right in the, the average of its 25 day average. It's right in the middle. Okay. That's not bad. Let's see what happens if we put a 50 day average on here. It's way above a 50-day average, so it's still somewhat high, right? Is that good news or bad news? Does that mean it still has room to crash? Or will this 50-day average start moving up here, and will it be supporting it? On the RSI, we still have it pretty much, you know, up. It's not – it did pop through uh, the uh, – the 70, but that was back on December 20th, you know, so we have, we have a little less than a month here of it just sitting, just going sideways, people, that to me is a serious get your ass in buy signal, right, and we don't know, it might drop, right, it might just, everybody might go, oh, you know, Bitcoin Cash is just a joke, They've, they fixed all the problems with Bitcoin, and uh, Bitcoin Cash is just going to disappear. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to fix the problems with Bitcoin this week. Bitcoin Cash is usable. It's not as fast as Dash, but it's fast enough. It's perfectly usable, uh, and the transaction fees are reasonable. And it's not 13000 or $20,000. It's only $2,420. Right, and it has gone up as high as twenty eight hundred dollars in the last couple of days. So there is some price movement. There seems to be life and support. So that's and let's dial in. This is the only one that I'm looking at right now of the currencies that I kind of stock. That I'm going. You know what? This sucker could really pop. Uh, I just see it's. Look at the sideways trading range on the one hour chart. It has, we have some data, right? Up and down, 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 right? But right now it's down. Right now it's at its little down spot, right? And if I can actually run my computer, not a bad time today to actually get some because the in all likelihood, it's going to go up to 2,900 and test it and you could sell. Boom. And then let it come back down here. It's going to be a little higher, but you could actually do some swing trades here if it just keeps doing this. So that's that's what my, and again, I'm giving myself advice. Now, I'm in at 2400 So I've been enjoying this, which is good because I'm also in at 3400 I got it up here when I was carried away thinking, oh, this one's going to pop. This is going to go to 10000 and give Bitcoin a run for its money. Because, you know, I, I get carried away sometimes, you know, and uh, we all do. So, um, and I figured out if it goes to 2800 I actually could sell and be okay. But I really want to see if I can <coughs> hang on until this thing goes to 3800 That's my goal. I think it's going to pop. And... I want to do it on camera so you guys can see if I'm right. You can go, yeah, that, that guy knows what he's talking about at least, you know, a little bit. And if I don't know what I'm talking about, then I will learn why I was wrong. And then that will improve my trading, right? So it's the whole idea, people, is to not be afraid of failure, but also to not go around flapping your mouth if you're not really an expert, right? And there's a lot of people in the YouTube space that are flapping their lips um, I think in an irresponsible way. So I'm attempting to be responsible and, uh, and I really don't care how many subscribers I get. If you do like what I'm doing though, I would love it if you would subscribe, but I don't sit here watching my subscriber numbers and I don't try to say stuff to improve my subscribings, right? Um, I'm just trying to trade and be a profitable trader and not go insane myself and to, you know, do it in a sustainable, holistic, healthy way for me so that I can still be here five years from now, uh, 
but instead of, you know, making trades at level A, I'll be making trades at level, I don't know, W or Z or Q or M, whatever. All right, so I think Bitcoin Cash is looking like it's really, it's, I'm a gardener. So there's a time when you plant your tomatoes in May here in upstate New York, you usually wait till after Memorial Day. Then you got these little tomato plants and then you got to watch them. And then eventually they have little blossoms and then you start getting tomatoes. And right now, uh, it seems like Bitcoin Cash has a bunch of tomatoes, right? It's at the, the green tomato stage, but some of them are starting to ripen. And then there's that week in August, like the third week in August, second to third week in August when, holy crap. There's a lot of tomatoes and they're all ripe. I don't think we're quite there yet. I think we might be just a little bit ahead of when all the tomatoes are going to be ripe. <laughs> so that's that's my best analogy for Bitcoin Cash. But I don't think it's going away. I think it's here to stay. And I think we're going to see, you know, particularly if Bitcoin is not being fixed, which it isn't, uh, immediately uh, at least the perception is that it's just it's slow and expensive it's slow and expensive and no one's fixing it and da 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 um i think bitcoin cash has a place and i've been using it to move my stuff around you know i would definitely prefer bitcoin cash or litecoin to move my stuff like f to different exchanges um and ethereum right now is just too high for me to even touch uh, and we'll talk about that when we get there, but not a bad time to buy. And I'm going to stop talking because I think it's probably going to, we're going to have some price action here in the next uh, couple hours. It's uh, eight o'clock on Monday morning, Eastern time. Uh, Bitcoin gold, I was totally and completely right on Bitcoin gold. And I'm really excited to share this with you. Let's go to a one day chart because I actually did something right. And Saturday, um, Right after I made my video, it started popping. And what did I say in my video? I said kind of similar thing to a lot of these currencies that are kind of going sideways right now. We have multiple bottoms, so we have support right along this $200 and change line. Boom. And I got in here uh, on the 22nd of December. I got in here just about 220 bucks, something like that. It might have been as high as 240. I don't remember. Um, and I was just curious because I saw this pattern, and I'm not into Bitcoin gold, mind you. For me, this was a pump and dump. I'm like, okay, can I swing trade this? Can I learn how to see this pattern? And I saw we had the up and the down and the up and the down. And I'm like, we have three tops here. At the time when I made my decision to go in, we had a triple top. And I've been able to trade these patterns pretty darn well when I see them. So I got in here at the towards the bottom of its range. I didn't get the best price, but I got a decent price. I'm still learning how to get the best price. Still learning that. Uh, and then I held on. And then Saturday, boom, it popped. And I took profits at 315. I just sold it all. Boom. At 315. Because I didn't know how far it was going to go. And that was enough. I was trying not to be greedy. Sometimes if you hang on to get that last extra little bit, it never goes there. And then you're screwed. Right? So uh, so I had a chance to sell at 315. And I took it. And took that profit and put it into uh, one of my long-term holds, uh, which is Cardano. Uh, so that's the strategy that I was employing. And if it comes back down here, would I buy more? Absolutely. I'd buy some more at 200 and write it up again. So to me, that could be a good, a good use of Bitcoin gold, but I don't know. You know, it's not, I don't think it's going to be, you know, a huge cryptocurrency for the future, but who knows? You know, I, I don't think it, is an interesting or exciting project. It's not It's not like EOS or Quantum or Cardano or any of these newer third generation cryptos, but it is it tradable? Yeah, it seems to be tradable. And I was able to test a theory 
and get some real world results. And so I did okay. Uh, didn't, uh, didn't make me rich, but I made a profitable trade. Boom. All right. So let's just quick look at it on the one hour and let's pop in some more of these averages. And so, you know, we had a little cross with the 25 day moving, the 25 hour, excuse me, moving average and the 50 hour moving average. And that's kind of what I was, why I added this, this shorter average, because I just wanted to see what's my two weeks look. You know, I needed kind of a two week check to see, all right, here we had a big boost where are we? Where am I on this thing? This looks so weird. Bitcoin gold one or chart. Oh yeah, I, I was trying. I lost my. I, I was tied in too too tight. Okay, so so on the the one hour chart we have our shaggies, right? I call them the shaggies when you pull back on the one hour chart. Um, I'm going in tighter now, so I know now I know where I am. Okay, so ah, people, I apologize for my twitchies. Here we go. Ah! <laughs> Stop. Just want to get a little bit over here. Okay, so what what I'm trying to learn here in front of you is. What happens when something's about to pop? Are there any signals that I can learn? I can make this just a little bit bigger without losing it. Are there any signals that I can look at that says, hey, this might be about to pop? And what I have here is when, and I'm just going to keep looking and seeing if this is a consistent piece thing, a consistent thing, is my 50-hour average crossed beneath my 25 hour average so it crossed beneath it but my 25 hour average started to lift right there at that little spot uh and that's the question is it usable let's look and see what's happening here we have the opposite the 50 hour has just crossed the 25 hour uh, I don't know, people. Is it going to boost again today? It looks like it wants to. But is it going to try and not get it done? I don't know. So that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with this, people. I'm so obsessed with this. Okay, enough. Let's start grinding through some of the others a little quicker. But that that's in-depth coverage, people. <laughs> and I don't know if it sheds any light on anything, but... The main thing I want to say, and I'll say this over and over again, if I can do this, you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. And this is how I'm learning to do it right in front of you. And I'm doing what I need to do without any clue as to whether it's entertaining or not. So hopefully uh, it's educational more than entertaining. But that's what I'm doing. I'm looking deep into these things to see if I can learn. Because if you can learn it, then you can come back day after day and make a living. Okay. Dash. Dash doing a similar thing on uh, the one-day chart, getting into the sideways trading range, but the bottoms are slightly higher. I think that's good news. It's going, it seems to be like it's consolidating. And I think that's, that's healthy. And it's right now between the 50-day average and the 25-day moving average. Um, that seems like a nice a nice place for it to be. Uh, and again, I think you have time. I don't think you need to buy today, but whenever it comes down <coughs> to this kind of below a thousand dollar mark, might be a good entry point if you want to get yourself some dash. Uh, let's look at EOS. EOS is still up. And uh, I still would not recommend that you buy any right now because it's up on the one hour chart. Let's see if we have enough of a pullback. We don't really have enough of a pullback perhaps to justify, but 
if you think EOS is a good long-term project and you want to get in, uh, it's right above its pretty good solid chunk of supportishness. Supportishness over here. Um, you know, so if EOS kind of starts doing a sideways bit and it comes down to this line, it might be a good time to get some, right? And we have the... Uh, the 25-day average has just has crossed the 50-day average. No, the hour. So we're, we're on the hour. <laughs> the 25-hour has crossed the 50-hour uh, and also has just crossed the 100-hour. And so we'll see what happens. Let's look at the RSI down here. And let's get rid of this. So we, we almost touched the 30, but not quite. Um, so I think it's, it certainly doesn't seem to be over oversold. <laughs> so uh, and we did have a couple overbought indicators not too long ago because it has been moving. But again, remember, EOS is not even going to launch until June, <laughs> right? And it's already at 14 bucks. So I think EOS, this is my long-term hold. I'm just going to hang on. Going to hang on here. Not seeing anything other than if we do more of a sideways range, I might get more. And if it comes down and shows, continues to be supported on this line around 13, uh, could be a good support sign and maybe time to get in. Uh, we know it's already almost it tested the $20 range or the $19 range. Uh, and it didn't crash from it, but it tested it, came back, and now it has support here at a much higher level than it was at. And the question is, will it hang on to the support or will it start dribbling down like some of the others have done? So that's that's EOS. Let's go back to the one-day chart. Uh, Ethereum Classic. I don't really watch Ethereum Classic, but every once in a while I just look at it, see what, see what it's doing. Okay, and it seems to be moving up nicely. Um, Obviously, I wouldn't get any here, but if it does come back, this might be something that is tradable because it shows a pattern, right? If it comes back down to this this support here, you know, if you just keep an eye on Ethereum Classic, uh, and it came down to this $21 support or $22 support line, something like that, um, it might be starting up one of these sideways trading patterns in which you can do some swing trading. Um, and again, these tops are higher, one, two, three higher tops, uh, but we have bottoms now that have been fairly consistent. So I don't know what that means. We'll see and we'll keep just an eye on, just keep an eye on it. That's all. Uh, Ethereum, I'm not even looking at Ethereum. It's just too high right now. I can't even, I can't even comprehend buying Ethereum at the moment. Uh, glad somebody does. Glad somebody's making money on it. It's not me. Um, IOTA, we have a nice sideways trading range. If it comes down to this line, I will look into getting more. And I like the fact that it's holding. I like the fact that it's just kind of going sideways. That might be boring, but every time these sideways ranges, I've been able to get in at a decent price at the bottom of its sideways range, that has been my most profitable entry point consistently. And even though I don't know what the hell I'm doing here, people, if I can take something so simple and actually make money with it, then you can too. That's the whole point. But this is not to be construed as investment advice. Only invest money that you are prepared to lose. And uh, eventually the government will come in and regulate everything and take care of you and make sure you never lose a cent in the markets. But we all know, people, we're grown-ups. All this could go away with some good solid FUD. Um, but chances are it'll bounce right back. So hopefully we're okay. Uh, so sideways trading range in IOTA. Looking good. Same deal with Litecoin. Sideways trading range. These are good setup times. When it comes down to these lines, that's when you want to get in. But maybe you don't want to get in just yet, right? But the bottoms are higher here on Litecoin. So, 
you know, if we have anything that drops below this line but still shows like it's going to hang on to, let's say, uh, this level of support, you know, if it makes a channel here between 200 and 280, really between 200 and 300, uh, if it develops, you know, kind of comes down here, then that to me would be buy signals. Anytime it comes down to 200, particularly if this goes on for another week or so and we just have an up and downy, up and downy, up and downy, up and downy. Wherever it's downy, you can buy sub, and wherever it's uppy, you can sell it and then buy it, buy low, sell high, right? Um, but in the meantime, it seems stable enough, so if you wanted to move some money, you could pop some money into Litecoin and send it, uh, and by the time it got there, it would still be just about the same amount of money, right? That's a concern. So let's keep going. Neo, evidently Neo is popping because it's starting to do some ICOs on its platform and they seem to be doing well. So that's what Neo's doing. And I just want you to see this because at some point Quantum and EOS will be doing ICOs on their platforms as well. And so that could cause some boost. But on the one day chart, let's look at the RSI. We are seriously one, two, three, four pops into the overbought area. So if the RSI is a useful tool, it might be useful in saying, don't buy this right now, <laughs> right? And this is not to be construed as investment advice. It could go to a thousand and you could be pissed at me, but I would say do not buy this here because it is boosting and we don't want to buy when stuff is boosting. Every time I've done that, it has been dumb <laughs> and I have felt dumb and I've lost money. Uh, and so, and also, you know, when it's boosting, you want to really, I think, a couple of days of non-boosting is your prerequisite. And then, <laughs> you know, you want to see a sideways trading range. Omise Go is going. This is another one of my long-termers. I'm hanging on to my Omise Go. I don't have that much, but uh, I'm hanging on. I don't have enough so that selling it now would make a huge difference. But I do have some. And whenever I have some of something, it causes me to be interested so Omise Go, I think, is looking good. Uh, not, obviously, a time to get in. Um, but on the one-hour chart, you know, we have we have a spike, boom, up, a spike down, right? This was the 8th of January. Then we have up, 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 up and down, up and down, and up and down, really. But we have, we have this little top, you know, on the one-hour chart. And oh, we have another top on the one hour chart. So on the one hour charts with Omise Go, we have rising bottoms. And we have tops all in a row. But then we have this one that couldn't quite get it done, but the bottoms are higher. I don't know. I just don't think it's a time to get in. But, you know, if it goes to 50, this would have been a great time to get in, right? So that's the thing is we don't know from this point forward what else is going to happen. But we do know that it could. it's probably going to go from 22 up to 26 or 25. 25-ishness here seems to be a pretty big even. Although it's more, no, it's, yeah, 26 is the big even, sorry. Um. So interesting stuff on the one hour chart. What's the RSI looking like? On the one hour chart, the IS the RSI has hit down, touched down below the 30, and then it popped right back up. So is is it ready to keep popping? Or is it gonna go sideways? That's the next question. Let's look at some of these moving averages. The 25 day has just dipped below the that the 25 hour has just dipped below the 50 hour people just saying numbers is so hard in my brain <laughs> particularly early in the morning when I have barely drunk my coffee okay looking at Omise Go and trying to answer the question should I get more is this a good time to get in I don't really know if I could say that I would prefer getting in down here towards the 22 range, and it's not too far away from that at the moment. Um, and if it chooses to break through this 25, you could be in a good spot. 
again, I have this from a lot earlier ago, and I don't know if it's really in that sideways trading range consolidation phase that you could count on as, oh, this is underpriced, let's, let's get in. Don't know. Really don't know. Uh, that's obviously something I'm thinking about. And I certainly wouldn't buy any at 26, but I'm like, oh, huh, if I bought more here, I might be in a good position. But again, it could also trail back down, which a lot of these have done. So that's something I'm watching very carefully. Let's go back to the one-day chart. And it's really up, you know. So I, I, you know, maybe this is a bullish flag or maybe it's just it's kind of maybe run out of some steam. I would like to see a bit more of a sideways trading range for multiple days, maybe a week, two weeks before I go, yeah, okay, I think it might be a good time to get it. Uh, and just remember, Bitcoin Gold and Bitcoin Cash have been doing their sideways trading ranges for several weeks now. That to me is like, yeah, they're settling down enough and now we're maybe ready for another boost. Uh, okay, Quantum. Quantum is... I really like Quantum. I think it's a great project. Um, I think we're going to see Quantum above 100. You know, so I'm so bullish on Quantum. I I could almost say just buy it. Anytime you can buy it, just buy it, right? But I would still personally want to get it, you know, when it came down to this line, you know, this kind of upward trend line on the bottoms. Uh, so I'm back in, I keep selling it whenever it pops up here and then I keep buying it back down here and I don't usually get the perfect price. I think I'm in at 50 this time. Last time I got in at 52 and I sold it all and, uh, and I didn't intend to do swing trading with quantum, but that's kind of what I've ended up doing just because I had a ton of it and I sold a lot. I, t I sold a ton of it. And that's what started me thinking, you know, sometimes I might do better if I just hold long term, uh, particularly on projects I totally and completely believe in. So anyway, we're going to keep going. I don't know if it's time to get into quantum or not. Okay, XMR Monero, again, it's way up. It's just rising up. So not really an entry point. Ripple, 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 ripple. Could we be entering a, ne a new entry point? I don't know. On the one day, I don't think it's enough of a sideways trading range to justify it. On the one hour, we have this kind of, we did have a sideways trading range and then it couldn't hold and it dri started dribbling down here. It has come down to this $1.50 range once, twice, um, Seems to be holding at the dollar eighty range. Um, it's way below the two hundred hour, but it's just below the all the other moving averages. Um, what's it doing on the RSI? It has just touched down several times. One, two, three, four, five, six almost seven times on the one hour charts. Is that enough? Is that enough to justify? Is that enough to say, you know what? I think Ripple's going back up to $3 from here. That's the question. You know, if you get in here today and it might not be a bad place, will it hold or will it drop, right? So it's only been kind of in this little sideways range since the 14th and today's the 15th. So that's really only a day. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I lost my volume. I don't know where my volume went on this chart. <clears throat> it was down here someplace. Let me see if I can hide my RSI. See if my volume will come back. Where is it? What's this down here? Whoa. It's not what I wanted. Who knew? Okay. Oh, there's my volume right there. Let me see if I can make it go up. I just want to pop it above here and see. It looks to me, and, I, and I'm not doing very well with this chart, looks to me like the volume is pretty down. 
And again, we want to buy stuff when the crowd is looking the other way. Is the crowd looking the other way yet? Enough? I don't know. Uh, we're going to get rid of the volume. I'm just going to get rid of it all together. Oh, but how did the RSI... I don't know, people. I'm, I'm a real doofus with these charts. You know, all the moving stuff up. There we go. Okay, got it back down below. I don't know why the volume was like tied in with the RSI and now the RSA's. Oh, I turned the. There we go. <laughs> yeah, hope that was entertaining. So just looking at this and looking at it and looking at it. I think our main support is down here. I think a buck fifty. So, you know, here's a here's something I'm starting to think about that maybe I might put an order in, you know, at 140 or 139 or some odd number down here below where I think it's gonna go. I think that's what's opening up in my mind is oh, that's what these experienced traders talk about when they talk about putting in orders below the market. Because if it does have a flash crash, you get in low, and then you can ride it up. So that's something, the next stage, perhaps, of my trading initiation by fire to think about. But right now, we'll see if this little sideways range can hold. I think Ripple is quiet for the moment, and I could be wrong, but I'll be keeping an eye on Ripple throughout the day. Last one of these major ones that I look at. Uh, Zcash um, developing a sideways range and it's tightening down. We had the big swing, then the smaller swing, then a, a kind of a boost, and then a kind of a bloop. And it seems to be right in the middle right now of its kind of horizontal range. Um, and we have higher bottoms, you know. And Zcash is, is experiencing some forks, right? There's Zcash and there's Zcash Classic, and I think there's another fork that's about to happen called Bitcoin Private. And to me, that's, again, using the Bitcoin brand without real legitimate, you know, but Zcash is, is actually, you know, I think in some ways a clone of Bitcoin with privacy added, but I could be wrong. I'm not a tech guy. That's my impression. Um... So we might be working into a buy for Zcash at some point here. Uh, so I'm keeping an eye on it. Now, the last one I'm going to do right now, because I need to wrap this thing up, is Cardano. Uh, that's Cardano against Bitcoin. Um, and we had a nice sideways trading range, but then it dribbled down. And then we had a little attempt at a boost, but then it couldn't hold it. Uh, but I think that's healthy because we are, we, we're kind of, at least on the Bitcoin chart, we seem to be in a, in a place where it is moving sideways, some above, some below. That to me is a good sign. It's holding its value and it seems to be tightening down. Uh, looking at the U.S. dollar tether chart. And again, this is a one hour chart because it doesn't have enough data. This is where uh, I got in at a dollar because I saw the sideways trading range and I thought, okay, great. Um, but I was too early. That was my lesson. And so I'm trying to not jump in on these sideways trading ranges just off a high. I want it to really settle down. I want it to see what's going on. So then I got some more at... Um, what did I get it yesterday at 75? I got in again at 75 down here. Uh, that was a better buy. Um, I think I also got some at a higher at 87. All right, so I've been buying it whenever I thought was a good time here. Um, and so that's you know that's what I'm learning to to ladder in. Um, when I really, I am really fundamentally uh, enthusiastic about this project. I keep 
I've done a ton of research on it. I like the team. I like how they're handling uh, their updates. I like this guy, Charles Cardano, Charles, Cardano, Charles Hoskinson. Um, I like a lot about it, and I think it's going to be a really good long-term project. Whether I'm right or not, it kind of depends on them. However, um, this is one I decided to turn into a long-term hold. So for me, it feels like I'm getting into a position to buy some, to get some good buys here, not to scrape the bottom, but to do the best I can to get some good prices so that when I hold it, anything above a dollar, I know I'm in profit. Uh, and if it goes to $10, I'll be able to buy the land that I want to buy and start a farm, right? <laughs> if it goes above a hundred bucks, uh, I'll pretty much be able to do anything I want in my life, right? So that's the idea, but you don't want to just do that with one crypto. You want to kind of keep an eye out, and that's part of why I'm learning this, because I want to be eventually a long-term investor uh, so that I can really begin to focus on marketing my music and getting it out into the world, right? Uh, and so I like Cardano a lot. And uh, I'm going to keep watching it closely. And that's it for today. Um, you know, I I think anything down here in the 75 cent range looks pretty good. And it also looks like, um, you know, our volume's out a little bit. I want to be in a project when everybody else is looking the other way. When everybody else is talking about uh, Tron or whatever they're talking about. I want, to, I want to go where they're not, and I want to get in on the projects that are really high quality that have long-term potential. So that's it for this morning. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you again. Welcome to this week. This is week three of the new year and uh, week three of my new 90-day challenge to go deep into the rabbit hole of Bitcoin and to uh, learn how to earn a living because my goal is by the end of this 90-day challenge... I'm going to say it out loud. My goal is to quit one of my day jobs. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's it for now. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace grooving is over now. Leave those comments below. Give me a thumbs up. Push the little bell to get notifications. And let's start the music. <laughs> <laughs>